New South Wales, the most populated state in Australia, is where we start a new week of coverage on CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus at the CNN Centre. New South Wales is where you'll find Sydney, the Australian capital and largest city in the country. It's also where dozens of bushfires are burning up land and homes. A New South Wales Rural Fire Service said yesterday that 70 fires were burning and that half of them hadn't been contained yet, meaning they weren't blocked in and prevented from spreading. Several people have died in the fires. More than a thousand firefighters are trying to put out the blazes. And a fire official says 100 or more homes might have been destroyed so far. Witnesses have posted pictures of bright orange skies. Intense wildfires are capable of causing their own weather. And the fire service says that's what's happening in some parts of New South Wales where fire clouds were developing. These can produce their own lightning without rain. Officials say the state's under tinderbox-like conditions and that all it takes is one spark to start a fire that can burn for days. Major roads and highways have been closed. Several schools have been closed. Evacuations have been ordered in the state of Queensland, which borders New South Wales to the north. Both of these states are prone to wildfires in the spring, which it is right now in the southern hemisphere, and firefighters are predicting catastrophic fire danger for areas around Sydney this Tuesday. 10 second trivia. Which of these events occurred 30 years ago? Soviet troops left Afghanistan, Hubble telescope was launched, Gulf War began, or the Berlin Wall fell? The only one of these events from the year 1989 was the fall of the Berlin Wall. The date was November 9th, and that made Saturday the 30th anniversary of when the wall started tumbling down. European leaders met in Berlin, Germany on November 9th when German Chancellor Angela Merkel called on them to defend democracy. The Berlin Wall was a physical and symbolic barrier between democracy and communism. It had stood since August of 1961 when residents of Berlin woke up one morning to find a dividing line built of barbed wire and cinder blocks. It was eventually fortified with concrete, armed guards, electric fences, and it would take almost three decades for the winds of change to bring it down. The iconic moment the Berlin Wall came down is an image the world will not soon forget. For 28 years, the wall had been dividing a city and a nation, becoming a symbol of east-west divisions during the Cold War. So what led to this 12-foot high, 27-mile-long wall being built? Break down the wall! Break down the wall! After Germany's defeat in World War II, the country was divided into four zones of occupation and Berlin was also divided into East and West territory. The United States, France, and Britain took West Germany in the western sectors of Berlin, and the Soviet zone became East Germany and East Berlin. West Germany became a democracy, while East Germany was a communist country aligned with the Soviet Union. Between 1949 and 1961, almost three million East Germans escaped to the West. To prevent more people from fleeing the Soviet rule, the East German Communist Party closed the border in Berlin and built a wall. So in the 1960s, the wall was built for the opposite reason most are. Instead of trying to keep people out, this wall was built to keep people in. At least 140 people were killed at the Berlin Wall trying to escape East Germany. High-profile people spoke out, like U.S. President John F. Kennedy, who delivered his famous speech in West Berlin. The wall became a symbol of democracy versus communism. People came from all over the world to protest that division. Mr. Gorbachev, Tear down this wall. By 1989, large demonstrations began in various East German cities. People wanted change. This wall will fall, for it cannot withstand faith. It cannot withstand truth. The wall cannot withstand freedom. 
In October of 1989, the Communist Party chief Erich Honecker was ousted and replaced by Egon Krenz. Although reforms were announced, including travel rights, it was too late. On November 9, 1989, the East German government mistakenly announced that travel restrictions for East Germans had been lifted effective immediately. Thousands appeared at border crossings in East Berlin demanding to be let through. Even without orders, the border guards eventually opened the gates. In the following months, tens of thousands of Germans literally tore down the wall piece by piece, by hand, using their fists, pickaxes, sledgehammers, and shovels. Streets and crossing points opened, and tens of thousands of people crossed into the west of Berlin for the first time. Freedom and ultimately a unified Germany emerged from the bitter Cold War that had separated Berlin for decades. In 1990, Germany officially reunified under the Federal Republic of Germany. Few parts of the wall still exist today. Tourists from around the world come to see these pieces of history. Yet this dark chapter of German division is not forgotten. November 1918, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of the year, an armistice goes into effect, ending the fighting in World War I. A year later, people in the United States first observe Armistice Day. It becomes an official national holiday in 1938, and after World War II and the Korean War, the name of Armistice Day is changed in 1954. It's been known as Veterans Day ever since then. It's an event that honors everyone who served in the U.S. Armed Forces, as Americans pause to thank them, salute them, remember and respect their service and sacrifices, MVP is the name of one of many programs dedicated to helping former U.S. servicemen and women. MVP is about putting teams together and uh, when you retire it's a weird feeling. Emerging Vets and Players is an organization that brings together combat veterans and retired professional athletes. It's about a team, it's about a unit. As football players, they don't miss training camp, I promise you. <laughs> All right? But they'd sure miss being part of a team and being next to your locker and talking to your guys about the things that are going on in your life. We already know that the, the military has a high rate of suicide, and once people get out, that struggle doesn't end because they're trying to determine who they are and what their place is in the world. To hear a you know, soldier say, I'm not on any medication anymore. You know, this is my new therapy. Wow. And uh, so that's those, powerful. that's powerful. So those are the moments that you hear that uh, makes you tear up to know that the little impact you can have and makes a difference. How you doing, brother? Got you back. Yeah, I already know. I got yours too. When I left that, it was a shock because I no longer put on that uniform and I lost who I was, I felt like. I was like begging, you know, to take the misery away because I lost my tribe. I lost my team. I mean, to lose that bond, uh, it nearly broke me. I'm not the only one uh, going through this, and, uh, and it gave me hope. Because uh, there were times that I did feel hopeless. And, uh, but this, this brought me hope, man. There's an opportunity to come together and be with people like yourself and share some of the stories and some of the things you've been through. Very powerful. And it's a healing thing that happens. You don't have to struggle by yourself. We're, we're, we're willing to reach down and pick each other up because because I know deep down, tomorrow I might be the one reaching out my hand and needing someone to lift me up. I got your back! Who's got my back? I got your back! One, two, three! MVP! MVP. Stella the Talking Dog gets 10 out of 10. Well, at least she's communicating. Her master is a speech pathologist who says the same methods she uses to teach children to communicate can be used to help dogs do the same thing. And while come outside may seem kind of basic, one time when a button wasn't working, Stella went over to the help button and pressed that. She's doing a pretty Stella job, if you know what I'm saying. And some dogs could hound you to death with that, making you terrier your hair out and hit the Malamute button. But it could also be a best ingenious invention, a Newfoundland way in the course of conviselation when your dog could malt easily core give you the skipper keys to what he wants, at least master of the time. I'm Carl Azus, and you knew this doggone show would come to an end schnauzer or later. <laughs>